first of all, I'm so happy to be through to the next round. And um, it was tricky today because I didn't really know my opponent. I'd never met her before. And she played um, a bit of a an unorthodox tennis compared to to other players. It was really difficult to to read her game. So um, just really happy to be through. I think I kept my composure when I needed to. And um, yeah, um, we're able to mix up the pace and kind of go for my shots when I needed to. So um, just happy to be through. Name and affiliation, one question each. I'll get to a follow-up if I can. David. Hi, Caroline. David Kane, tennis.com. Three wins for you now. How does it feel to be in sort of a good rhythm heading into the second week? Well, it's it's always nice. I, I love playing here. Um, anytime I get to play another match here, I, I, I'm very pleased with that. I'm I'm thrilled to to be in this, into the second week, of course. Um, and then just excited to get to play hopefully on one of the big courts in the next one as well and, and just kind of move from there. I always get great support here. So um, that's something I really appreciate. Really? After your last match, you spoke about you'll go as far as your body will take you, that you're feeling confident, you're playing well. What is that balance right now between what's in your head and <laughs> how you're feeling physically? Well, that's uh, from day to day, that's a very different answer that I can give. But today, I feel I feel a lot better than I did yesterday and the day before. So it's uh, we're in a positive direction. And, and I think tomorrow I'm going to feel a lot better than I do today. Um, my arm feels a lot better. My, my back feels pretty good. So so we're moving in a good in a good way. And hopefully I can just get a good practice in tomorrow, get some good rhythm and and kind of move on from there. In the back. Hi, I'm wondering if your arm and back are related to RA, and have you had to change your protocol at all since 2018? Um, neither are related to my RA, um, so I guess that's good, or maybe that's bad, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but neither of them were. I think um, I don't really know why either of them came um, on. I've had a couple of back issues, you know, months ago, but it uh, has been pretty good since then. So... Um, yeah, just something that I have to manage. And I guess when you push your body to the limits, sometimes little things come up. But um, my arm feels good. That was my biggest concern. And my back is, is feeling better every day. So, Tom. Caroline, how, how different is that to when you were 20, 25? And you, I guess you work up every day feeling good. Now it's yeah. not quite the same. Yeah. I think my, my thing throughout my career has always been I wake up every day, something is hurting. But it was, you know kind of manageable and now as I've gotten older sometimes it's not as manageable and I think that's kind of the difference where you know I really need to be careful and really need to take care of every single little thing because that quickly becomes a big thing um, whereas before oh, a little thing here a little thing there it's all right you know we kind of just push through it and I think that's kind of the, the main thing I, I, f I can feel that I'm not 20 anymore and I'm not recovering as as a 20 year old anymore as well and I think in my head I can still feel like maybe I'm 20, and sometimes when I move around the court, I'm like, I still got this, but I'm definitely paying a lot more for some of those movements that I probably wasn't previously. Following up on that, at this stage of your career, how do you approach goals and expectations while still managing your health? Well, I think for me at this, at this stage, obviously, um, it's a lot different than it was back in the day. I think I, I really try and peak for the slams right now. Back in the day, you know, I was fresh and ready to play every single tournament. Now I'm using every tournament that I play to for the Grand Slams, and that's my main goal. And, you know, that's, that's where I want to be. That's where I know I play every other day. I can, I can really set myself up. My body can be set up for, for playing 100% every single match. So, so that's kind of where my mindset is at. Um, and I think that's, that's the most realistic thing that I can do right now is just, you know, think of the slams and how can I play the best in those moments. On the left, Craig. Kara, do you appreciate it a lot more <laughs> second time around now that you've been back on tour for an extended period compared to before kids and marriage, etc.? Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't think, you know, obviously marriage is, is a big deal and, and super happily married. But when you're married, it doesn't really change your preparation of how you 
prepare for practice or matches or days off. But having kids is a big difference. Obviously, you know, my kids are are there every single day and I, I really appreciate it. it's the best job in the world and I, I love it. But also, you know, I, I try to make sure that I am still there as a hundred percent present mom while I'm also trying to balance, you know, being the best tennis player that I possibly can be. And I think that's where sometimes it can get a little tricky and, and, you know, obviously my family is the most important thing to me, but at the same time, I love winning. And so, so finding that balance of being like, I need to take time out for me and, and be able to recover and, and play and practice as much as I can and try not to feel guilty of taking a few hours away with, from the kids. And I think that sometimes that mom guilt comes, comes out, but you know, I try and manage as, as well as I can. And right now it's six o'clock and I'm hoping to be back before bedtime so I can see them tonight as well. David, last question. Caroline, I was just wondering if you ended up getting in touch with Serena and in the last two years since her evolution, just what she has been like in the sort of post tennis phase. Well, Serena is obviously still very busy. Um, you know, I think when you've been such incredible at something, I think, you know, you'll always have the opportunity and you'll always be great at whatever you put your mind to. And, you know, she obviously is busy. She has two kids. She has a husband. She has her sponsorship. She has all of that. Um, but, you know, I, I love hanging with her. I love talking to her. And, um, you know, it's, I, I love the support that I get from her as well. So it's, uh, it's nice. I'm, I was texting her earlier today and, and hoping that we'll have time to catch up. Thank you, everyone. Does the machine seem lighter to you, not having to compete anymore? I don't know. I feel like, to me, she's always been, you know, that upbeat and happy person. Obviously, we are all in the zone when we're about to compete. And so... That's different when you don't play anymore. But at the end of the day, I think, I think she's always been, you know, a happy and outgoing person. Now we can transition. Go ahead, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Corina. Uh, I will pause Serena to joke with me on the ball. And you were really good for her. Was there to see her play? Have you seen her play? Or what after the match? Yeah, we have just joked a little. And just had a little show. She has some some sponsor things that she was supposed to do. So she was on the center court. Og lavet nogle sweet visits og sådan. Mødte øh, din mand David efter kampen, og vi spurgte, om vi ville lave et kort interview med ham. Men han turde simpelthen ikke, for de sidste par gange, vi har gjort det med ham, der har du tabt et efterfølgende kamp. Er, du, er han sådan meget overtroisk generelt? Eller? Jeg tror, han er mere overtroisk, end jeg er. Så, øh, så ja, jeg, jeg lader ham bare gøre øh, de ting, som han synes øh, fungerer. Øh, altså, ja, så forbereder jeg mig på min egen måde. Sagde, at øh, ryggen er bedre, ikke? Mærkede du ikke noget, eller, eller hvordan var det derude? Nej, den var lidt stiv, men generelt øh, klar, klar forbedring. Jeg tror, det var meget godt, at jeg ikke øh, trænede i går, og bare gav lov til lige at tage det stille og roligt. Øh, og efter min behandling havde det meget bedre, så øh, igen, jeg tror, at øh, det er meget positivt, at den har reageret, reageret på den måde, øh, og regner med at være 100% øh, i morgen eller i morgen til at kræve behandling, eller hvad tror du? Ja, hver dag får jeg behandling, bare lige for at være sikker på, at den er, hvor den skal være, at der ikke øh, kommer noget op, så øh, det er meget normalt, at, øh, ja, at man får noget behandling øh, efterfølgende, bare for at være sikker på, at alt er, som det skal være. Jeg lader mærke til, at den, øh, den trøje, du har på, der er sådan særlig detalje her. Er det, er det noget, du selv, øh, selv har bedt om? Eller? Nej, det er faktisk alle der, der har der har gjort det for mig, så det okay. synes jeg var meget sejt. Øh, så der er både Olivia og James på, og så Nummer 1 i verden, og Australian Open og 30 WTA titler. Hvad betyder det for dig at kunne, kunne kigge ned på det her og lige blive med noget om, hvad, hvad du har opnået, både familiemæssigt og også... Jamen, jeg synes, det er så fedt. Det er en meget fed detalje og noget, der er meget specielt, og noget, som de sjældent gør for deres, for deres atleter, så det, det, betyder, det betyder rigtig meget. Jeg snakkede lige om, om Serena før. Jeg læste et interview med hendes mand forleden, hvor, hun, hvor han fortalte, at deres første date havde været lidt specielt, og det havde været lidt som en, som en afhøring. Og så kom jeg bare til at tænke på, hvordan din og Davids første date havde, havde været, hvis du øhm, kan jeg huske tilbage på det. Øhm, pff, det er lang tid siden efterhånden, men øh, vores første date var faktisk ikke en rigtig date. Det var, hvor vi var ude og spise med vores fælles venner, så vi var faktisk 10, øh, jeg tror 10-12 mennesker øh, alle sammen, og så faldt vi bare sådan lidt i snak, men snakkede alle sammen sammen, og Øh, det var et godt tegn, at mine venner godt kunne lide ham og, og mig, så, øh, så tænkte jeg, at det, det kommer nok til at fungere. Hvad faldt du for? Jeg tror bare, at øh, han er meget udadgående, meget optimistisk, meget positiv øh, og ret sjov, øh, så der, han har mange gode kvaliteter. 
hvor mødte du dem egentlig første gang, Karolina? Det var i Miami, øh, hvor jeg spiste i Nobu, øh, igen med, med en gruppe af vores, vores venner. Øh, så det var meget tilfældigt, at han var der. Vidste du, hvem han var og så videre? Eller, du, det gjorde jeg faktisk spørge. ikke. <laughs> Nej, øh, men øh, der var faktisk en af vores venner, som sad i boksen i dag, som øh, introducerede os, øh, så det var meget tilfældigt. Du stod øh, syv gange ude på medietavlen øh, nu her før. Mærker du sådan selv, altså en syv øh, årsigten herfra, mærker du selv sådan en øh, øget opmærksomhed nu her, når du er kommet ind i uge 2? Øhm, jeg synes generelt, at der er rimelig stor opmærksomhed her, øh, så det deler jeg det nogle gange. Jeg prøver at sige nej til det meste øh, for også bare lige give mig selv ro, øh, fordi der er altid en masse. Hvis det var, at jeg sagde ja til det hele, så ville det være, så ville det være her i flere timer, så nogle gange øh, prøver jeg bare at cutte det ned og gøre det, som, som er allervigtigst. Så kan der komme efter sådan en kamp, som eksempelvis dag? 20 måske. Jeg ved ikke, det, det er rigtig mange. Øhm, men, men igen, de er ret hurtige til at også cutte nogen fra med det samme, og så kommer jeg ind og siger ja og nej, og hvad man sådan lige har overskud til. Thank you. Super. Tak. tak. tak.